based in Lyon, France, Eleanor Blondeau is a passionate entrepreneur who seeks to harness new technologies and help others develop projects to help our environment flourish. As part of Eternity Systems, a world leader in the washing of reusable packaging and containers, Eleanor is developing regional networks of reusable container washing microfactories in Europe and North America to reduce our dependence on single-use plastics. In this presentation, Eleanor discusses how we can create circular economies, how to reduce the amount of waste we create, and how to reuse what we produce to preserve the finite resources of our planet. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here. Um, so I'm French, so I will have the cute French accent. <laughs> so um, nice to meet you all. Um, yeah, thank you for the introduction. Um, just to say that I was a clean tech entrepreneur for five years, and I'm now a new project manager at Identity System, who is a company uh, which is doing um, industrial washing for reusable containers and packaging. And I'm also uh, head of uh, an NGO uh, named Collectif Sacré Industriel France, which aims to contribute to the reindustrialization of France and of the reindustrialization and the ecological transition we all need to do. Um, but first, I wanted to speak about what is industry concretely, uh, because it's a world we are using every day. Um, and it has, it has always a uh, bad image of industry. It's uh, dirty, it's uh, hard, it's uh, um, bad working condition. It's, uh, yeah, with Shmi, like a Zola, Zola story. Um, but uh, industry is also what um, made, um, what helped us to have the security, the health and the comfort we have now. And also, it results in many of the products we use daily, and we often forget it. And so, industry can make pasta, can make shoes, can make fun, can make bicycles we you use every day. And so, we also what we need um, is to recreate all together an imaginary about industry uh, to better understand its role. Uh, because at the beginning, the role of the industry was to re rebuild the world post, um, post war and to make everyone have access to the basic comfort of education, of uh, uh, clothing, housing, feeding. Um, and uh, we, 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 we have to remember that uh, industry is not a bad thing. Of course, there are many different ways to make it. Uh, and I will try to present you a way I feel is a good way to make it uh, in accordance to the ecological and social transition we have to do. Um, but it re it's really important to explain what is industry is not just chimney and, and pollution, it's a daily product you use uh, every day. Um, but it's sure that um, the industry worldly uh, worldwide um, has um, faced many challenges. Um, first, for the countries that uh, like uh, America, the continent like uh, America, Europe, or uh, Australia, etc., um, they have been um, disindustrialized for the last 50 years, mainly um, to export industrialization um, overseas. and. That is a real challenge um, in many different points. Uh, one is if you want to do a transition, ecological transition, you have to um, have the hand on what you produce and how you produce it and every step of your supply chain. And uh, when it's uh, worldwide uh, exposed, uh, you cannot really manage it uh, correctly. The second point is uh, in case of crisis like the COVID crisis, uh, if you cannot again uh, have the hand on your supply chain, you cannot be reactive and then uh, you cannot help your country uh, really. Um, then also in case of a war as we have in Europe, um, it can really create a geopolitical dependence and uh, so that's why industry is really strategic for a country and every country must um, 
act and uh, at least uh, can should be able to answer the basic needs of its country. Uh, even if, of course, uh, doing international business, it's also a, a good thing to keep, uh, to try to keep uh, peace and, uh, and uh, exchange between uh, each, each uh, country. So there is a challenges of reindustrialization of the country that uh, uh, lost it, of sovereignty. Um, and uh, you will, uh, I will try to explain to you uh, the role of the industry in the ecological transition. And of course, uh, the, what we have to do now is it's not to recreate the industry of the last 50 years, is to create an industry uh, that is matching the ecological and social needs of the, 50 ne of the next 50 years. Uh, and digitalization, it's a good help of this, but uh, as I will say just after, uh, is not. Um, we don't have to connect everything. We need to connect just what is needed, not much, not too much, not not enough, but just the right level of technology. Um, so um, I wanted to explain to you what is circular industry. So of course it's based on circular economy, um, but adapted to the products and uh, supply chain um, case. Um, so if you take the principle of circular economy, uh, you must know the word refuse, reduce, reuse, repair, recycle, and rot. So the first step is to refuse, is to be in a in mind of sobriety. And um, when you identify a problem, the first you don't you don't you must not uh, start from a technology you developed without reason. You must start from a problem you identify and you must ask yourself, is this problem only my problem or is it shared with many other people? And um, if the answer is yes, is the, the next question should be, what is the best way and not, is, not the best technology, but the best way to understand this problem? Um, because sometimes, um, sometimes um, the best way, for example, uh, for the Nordic countries of Europe, uh, they had the problem with uh, sanitary um, of their public uh, toilet. Um, it was really disgusting, and uh, the, they, they were wondering. Who, why, how they could do to answer this problem? Uh, add the camera, add robots, add the uh, humans to clean. And finally, they just uh, put a little, uh, um, a, a little fly uh, next to the wall of the toilet. And this gentleman started to point at it. And then all the cleaning problem were okay. Um, so this is what we call a nudge. Um, but sometimes a nudge is not enough. And uh, for example, if you want to make um, um, a children um, uh, play all the afternoon because you have to work, what would you do? Give him uh, a small uh, electric car with uh, IoT supply chain, uh, IA, and etc. that will not have uh, energy into. Um, uh, large uh, landscape with uh, wood and with uh, little houses and uh, everything to play with the nature. Um, my uh, choice would be the second one because it's uh, infinite and it's mm, largely enough to make a, uh, a children play uh, all afternoon. But sometimes it's not enough to answer the problem you identify. So then you have to introduce, um, so the second choice was low tech. Uh, but sometimes you have to introduce high tech. Um, when you, for example, me, I had um, created the machine uh, clean cup, uh, which was aiming to eradicate the use of disposable cups and uh, improve the way to drink in campuses, companies, and communities. And uh, so a nudge wasn't enough. Uh, low tech wasn't enough. So I started to develop this machine, which was included. Uh, uh, mechanical, uh, electrical, uh, 
um, electronical um, and uh, many different technologies to uh, collect, distribute, and wash automatically on, on site reusable cups. Um, but then uh, when I had uh, finished it and I put it at the customer's places, I was wondering how can I do the maintenance monitoring? Should I put uh, maintenance technicians on cars that do a round uh, of my customers to let me know how the machines are, are going? Or should I connect the machine to make them uh, send data that I, I can monitor in real time but that consume uh, many uh, carbon uh, numerical uh, digital impact of the of the data. Uh, but the first one was the cars of the you know, carbon cars. Um, so I was uh, wondering which is the ecological and the economical best solution. I didn't know. So I did a life cycle analysis and an economical analysis. And it's just after this analysis that I chose finally to connect the machine, even if the captors were uh, mostly from Asia and uh, that um, the data uh, have an impact. But the analysis showed me, proved me that ecologically and economically, it was the best solution. Um, and so we developed then what I call a super high tech, that, that uh, it's a machine that, which includes IoT and et cetera. And uh, what I want to show by this example is that I, I didn't show directly the IoT solution. I really asked myself, should I apply another um, step of technology or not? And I really wanted to prove to me that ecologically and economically, and uh, from the customer point of view, it was really necessary or not. And it, it it, uh, it is only after this uh, analysis that I chose to do it um, because nowadays we have tendency to connect everything. Uh, even uh, jars of flowers and etc. are connected. And really sometimes we are wondering if it's really needed or not. Um, and with circular industry, um, also most people think it's only applying to packaging and to recycling, uh, but not. Um, a circular industry is applying to all um, to all industries. It's a mindset uh, from linear to circular industry. Um, it's a mindset you can apply even to um, I forgot the world. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, to a dual handle. Um, to a dual handle. Um, for example, um, if you this do under can be produced. Well, as, in, as I'm in French, I'm always taking this example, but you can change countries. Um, uh, this uh, do unders can be produced um, uh, in Asia with uh, bad social condition, with uh, no with a multi-materials uh, piece, with no recycling, with no reparation, and uh, you sell at uh, unit price, or it can be produced in France by someone that is uh, paid uh, correctly with uh, mono materials uh, pieces, with uh, reparation possibilities, with recycling possibilities, and uh, sell at a usage um, unit. And um, if you understand this example, even <laughs> with my French accent, um, you can understand that circular economy can really be applied to everything we produce. Um, it can be to your panacles, to your clothes, to your doors, to everything. Circular industry, um, it's applying at every supply chain steps of every um, product and processes we are developing. Finally, um, the, yeah, I, always, I already presented this, okay. Um, finally, I wanted to so this was to show that really circular industry applies to all industries. Um, but then if we focus um, indeed on the packaging industry, it, it's interesting because packaging, as consumer, we see it what the one we use uh, that are the primary packaging. So the jars, the bottles, uh, the, for the food container we are using. But packaging is 
actually in every industry, um, even in the supply chain, uh, but also in the health industries, in the in the cosmetic industries, in the in every industry, actually there are packaging. So when you work on packaging, um, you actually work on every industry. And if you try to go on zero waste supply chain, um, you can um, you, you have to rethink the way you produce and the way you consume. So if you are a producer, you have to look at the quality of the produce you product, you produce, and um, also all along the supply chain how it can be managed, how it can be transported, how it can be uh, repairing, recycling, etc. And uh, um, so, for example, um, if you want to eradicate the use of disposable film or disposable um, uh, palette, uh, you can use reusable ones, but then who will wash them, who will collect them, etc. Uh, that's why you have to work on ecosystem and regional ecosystem, but of, because of course you cannot uh, be in France or Australia using reusable palettes that will be washed in Asia. Uh, that makes no sense. Uh, so you have to have local uh, local loop of reuse uh, for every kind of uh, reusable packaging, and you have to think even if you use carbon and water to reuse this. Um, you have to think that to compare to the production of disposable ones that also use carbon and energy and materials uh, and raw materials to be produced uh, when it's uh, the first, uh, the virgin product. Um, so if the loop is uh, local enough, um, as the size of France, for example, it should be a, a region, a region size, uh, voila. Um, and so it apply at every step. It's when I'm producing and I send to the distributor shop, um, I should, I must uh, reuse uh, with uh, crates and palettes. Then when I put the product on shelves of the distributors, uh, Walmart or Carrefour or whatever, um, I should put, uh, I, I put, I should put um, deposits, um, bulk and reuse containers uh, that are easy to use for the consumer with a deposit system, with the collectors, uh, helping with the digitalization uh, that make it really much easier than when we, it was uh, our grandparents uh, were, that were using it. Because everyone said deposit is not new. Yeah, it's not new. But how we do it now is new because the digitalization helps us to manage the traceability, the deposit system, um, the, um, also to better understand the ecological impact of each step of the of the supply chain, and um, and then you can massify uh, the collection with the uh, the flows that are already existing between uh, washer, industrial, and distributors. Um, so that makes uh, zero supply chain uh, packaging. So uh, just to conclude. Um, I'm not sure if I was really clear today, but uh, I can um, I can speak to this uh, through LinkedIn if you need. Um, is that understanding that circular industry apply to all industries, apply to every step of the supply chain, uh, and even the business model of the. It's not only the producer problem; it's also the consumer challenge. Um, because if the producer put a nice ecological product on shelves, but that you're using badly, for example, if you, if I produce a very long lasting, uh, a washing machine, but then when you buy it, you kick it, you punch it and etc. Uh, in two days, it's not working anymore. Uh, but at the reverse, if I put a very bad washing machine on shelves and you, you, you repairing, you do the best thing you do to the washing machine. It's a bad thing. It's a bad product. So in two days, it will be broken again. So the producer has to produce nice uh, ecological and uh, resistant products that are repairable and etc. 
that the, the consumer also has this responsibility to uh, take care of this product and uh, make them the more uh, long lasting as possible with uh, reuse, with upcycling and etc. Uh, so it's not offer of the de or demand challenge, it's offer and demand challenge. And we all have to do our piece, um, our part to, to, to the transition uh, we need uh, to do. So I wanted to finish with this uh, nice sentence I like. If you want to build a bot, don't gather your men and women to give them orders, to explain every detail, to tell them where to find everything. If you want to, give, to build a boat, give birth in the health of your men and women to the desert of the sea. Thank you. <laughs>